Despite the fact that punk rock began as a rejection of 70s prog rock's musical complexity, as time went on, the genre grew into a breed of its own technical musicianship. And during the experimental late 80s, the trend of punk metal fusion would become increasingly popular through a few different sounds and would set a trend for punk music of the future. Though the majority of these subgenres would develop into sounds that many would consider to be metal-influenced punk as opposed to punk metal fusion, there is one genre I'd say kicked it all off and also gave us one of the most memorable punk fusion genres of all time. How's it going, folks? My name is Jack Miller. I am the incredibly underqualified punk historian, and my friends, I have been dying to talk to you all about hardcore punk, so I've decided to dedicate my first video on the subject to my personal favorite breed of it, Crossover Thrash. In this video, I plan on giving a little history lesson on Crossover and also offer some thoughts about the impact it had, and of course discuss why I think it's the bomb. Before we get started though, I do want to say I've made a Spotify playlist of some gnarly crossover tracks for you all to bang your heads to, and I will link that in the description below. And lastly, if you are interested in weekly videos about punk rock, may I humbly ask that you please subscribe to my channel here. I'm having a lot of fun making these, and I want to make sure that all of you can keep having fun watching them. Anyways! The tale of crossover thrash starts off in the United States in the early to mid-80s. Hardcore punk had been going long enough to establish itself reasonably well, and now everyone was trying to break out with their own flavor of punk music. Though I'm sure many of us will probably hear crossover thrash and think Los Angeles in terms of specific location, the earliest examples of the style were actually conceived in Washington, D.C. by the band Void upon the release of their split with The Faith in September 1982. Of course, calling Void a crossover thrash band might be a stretch, but this record certainly demonstrates the concept of punk metal fusion in one of its earliest, earliest forms. The first track fuses some very riffy guitar playing and finger tapping with the fast tempo punk grooves and power chord progressions, and this was completely unheard of for punk music in 1982. But I'm not here to say Void is or isn't a crossover band. That part isn't terribly important. What is important is that the seed had now been planted, and with the debut of the thrash metal sound the following year in 1983, punk metal fusion was about to make its first big mark. Following Void Split with the Faith, the new punk metal fusion sound would make its debut on the West Coast and in the American South in 1983. It would reach Texas first with the release of DRI's Dirty Rotten 7-inch in March, and California would follow shortly after with Suicidal Tendencies' full-length self-title a few months later. Again, neither of these records are that far off from the standard 80s hardcore sound, but you have to remember that this was only a year after the Void Faith split came out. And especially in the case of Suicidal Tendencies, I'd say these albums made some pretty noticeable developments on what Void started. With the release of Suicidal Tendencies album, everything was tightly put together into this very structured but just as intense package all of a sudden. And in a lot of ways, I'd say they set a standard for this stuff for the next few years and would continue to do so for the rest of the 80s. Like I was saying earlier, the metal scene was also cooking up a punk metal fusion genre of its own with the debuts of both Slayer and Metallica in 1983 as well, and Anthrax would follow shortly after with Fistful of Metal in 1984. I'm not going to talk about this stuff too much here as I'm focusing on the punkier side of things, but it is important to note as this stuff would play a crucial role in the next chapter for crossover. And lastly, I also of course have to mention the UK hardcore band Discharge, who are a huge influence on the crossover sound as well. Just like with Void, you could definitely argue that Discharge isn't really crossover thrash musically, but their album Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing was another very important factor in the sound's development regardless. So now the stage has been set, and I would say that 1984 was the year we got our first real glimpse of the crossover thrash sound. Following the release of Suicidal's 1983 self-title, DRI would release Dealing With It in 1984 and adopt a similar tight instrumental. Elsewhere in 84, North Carolina's Corrosion of Conformity would also release their debut album Eye for an Eye, along with Seattle's hometown heroes The Accused and their EP Martha Splatterhead. The crossover trend would continue to gain traction alongside the rising popularity of thrash metal until what I guess you could call the Big Bang for both genres around 1986 or 7. All of a sudden, crossover thrash bands were popping up everywhere at the dawn of the late 80s. And as thrash metal was taking over the metal scene, it only makes sense that crossover was now taking over punk. In the West Coast camp, we have the likes of Cryptic Slaughter, Poison Idea, Uncle Slam, Final Conflict, and Attitude Adjustment, as well as the famous Venice Beach scene that Suicidal Tendencies put on the map, featuring the likes of Beowulf, Excel, The Brood, and No Mercy. I also want to mention Southern California's Rich Kids on LSD, who were never quite a crossover thrash band, but definitely had an impact on this scene in the late 80s. I've done an entire video about them, so if you're interested, I'll link it in the description below. Crossover 
Weaver also developed a strong presence in the New York punk and thrash scenes, which birthed the likes of Killing Time, M.O.D., Leeway, Ludacris, The Crumb Suckers, and of course, Scott Ian from Anthrax's band, The Stormtroopers of Death. There's a plethora of kick-ass New York-based crossover bands from this era, so unfortunately, I just can't name all of them. This is the scene that would grow into the famous New York hardcore sound, and as much as I would love to talk about that stuff, it's very much a subject for a different video. But definitely stay tuned for that one if you're interested. This era also saw a number of bands from the early 80s punk scene make the transition from straightforward punk into crossover thrash. A few of my favorites in this camp include Wasted Youth, The English Dogs, Verbal Abuse, Gangrene, and of course, The Cro-Mags. Though I would certainly say the earlier catalog logs of these bands are worth a listen to. Personally, I think their crossover stuff is pretty underrated, especially Wasted Youth's album. It's totally got that dirty West Coast crossover feel and fits right in with bands like Excel and Suicidal. And then, of course, to round everything off, the late 80s gave us a series of awesome releases from DRI and Suicidal Tendencies, and the two bands really solidified their places as the prominent leaders of the genre. As I'm sure a lot of you probably know, crossover was a very short-lived phenomenon. It never developed nearly as strong of a following as the larger thrash metal scene, and it was replaced by skate punk and New York hardcore pretty fast in the punk scene. I'd say by 1992 or 3, Crossover had been replaced by the new branches of punk for the most part. And then once No Effects and Bad Religion blew up in 1994, along with the rapidly growing hardcore scene on the East Coast, its time in the spotlight was pretty much over. That being said though, the German thrash metal band Sodom's 1994 album Get What You Deserve is actually a rad crossover album, and it's definitely worth a listen if you're into this kind of stuff. DRI's 1995 album Full Speed Ahead and ST's Suicidal for Life from 94 are both killer crossover albums too. And I guess on that note, you could say the genre went out with a bang in the mid-90s. But recently, there's been a pretty lively thrash metal revival scene over the past 10 or so years. And alongside that, we've actually gotten some really solid crossover bands as well. Obviously here, the most notable band is Municipal Waste, and at this point, I'd say those guys are actually an essential for this stuff as they've become the genre's third biggest band. I'd also argue they're one of the best live bands in the game right now, and if you're into this kind of stuff and you haven't seen them live yet, once they start playing shows, you ought to do yourself a favor and hit that shit up. There's also, of course, Tony Foresta's other band, Iron Reagan, and then some sick underdog bands like Skullcrack, Vitamin X, and Take Offense. As you can tell from the relatively short list of bands in this video, Crossover Thrash still remains a very small scene, and the bands tend to bounce back and forth between playing shows with punk bands and metal bands. Nonetheless, the genre still certainly had a noteworthy impact on skate punk, and a lot of the new school tech skate punk stuff really isn't that far off from Crossover Thrash. I talked about that a lot in my skate punk video, so I'll provide a link in the description if you want to hear more about it. Also, I think it's pretty safe to say that this stuff has had an even longer lasting impact on hardcore, as most hardcore from the 90s onward draws influence from this stuff in one way or the other. Especially since most of the bands that invented the New York hardcore sound came out of the same scene that birthed a decent chunk of the crossover bands as well. Other subsects of hardcore punk like Crust and Power Violence tend to borrow from this stuff here and there as well. Although the influence there might not be as obvious, I think the fact that Crossover set the trend of blending punk and metal helped the more extreme fusions of the two gain sizable followings amongst both audiences. And then finally to wrap everything up, like I said, Crossover Thrash is my favorite subsect of hardcore punk. I said in other videos that Suicidal Tendencies is my favorite band, and I definitely channel this stuff from time to time with my songwriting as well. I'm also a pretty avid follower of thrash metal in general, but as the punk historian, Crossover is probably the closest I'm gonna get to covering that stuff on this channel. Anyways, I think that about sums up our little crash course here. Of course, this is just my take on the story of Crossover Thrash, but that's enough for me. I want to hear what you guys have to say. What are some of your favorite Crossover Thrash bands? Do you agree that most modern hardcore stems from Crossover, or do you think the genre would still have found its way without it? And one more thing, if you've hung around this long, I figured I'd let you know that my brand new band, Sellout Club, will be doing a Bridge City Sessions performance this weekend, and we will probably be driving home from Portland when I upload this video. In light of that, there will be a few extra uploads to this channel in the next coming weeks, which will be our performances from Bridge City. And of course, along with our usual Sunday airing. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.